Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In the last two sessions for AWS Let's Automate, we learned how to create EC2 instances with a simple Python code and we also learned how to configure AWS CLI on our machines. In the last episode, we also moved a step ahead and we created our first security group using Python and attached it to the instance. So I would request you to please watch it because we have a couple of prerequisites that you need to begin automation with AWS and Python. And you will also get the familiarity of the code that we will be discussing today. Having said that, in today's session, we will learn how to create a launch template with EC2 user data using Python. And we will also learn how to create an auto scaling group and attach the launch template to it. That should be interesting, isn't it? And we'll also learn how to clean up the resources that we have created. So without wasting any more time, let's begin. So I hope you have seen the previous videos and if you haven't then please go back to the previous videos that we have on the channel and please watch them and come back here to get the familiarity of the environment that we are currently using and if you have then you are at the right place and this is a familiar looking place isn't it we have the PyCharm IDE we have created a, a python file so I've named it AWS EC2 underscore user data underscore auto scaling dot py because we are going to use our python code to create or uh, to create a launch template and based on which we will be uh, adding the user data to it and we'll also create auto scaling group based on that launch template and we'll see how actually auto scaling works with automation so having said that please go ahead and create your files and before moving on to coding i'll just show you like exactly what we are trying to achieve here on the aws console so that you get the idea of what we will be automating so go to your ec2 management console and uh, here if you can see, if you go down on the left hand side, you will see auto scaling and here you see auto scaling group. So if you click on this, so as you can see, I have not created any auto scaling groups as of now. So if you just click on auto scaling group, create auto scaling group. So here you can actually choose a launch template or you can choose a launch configuration based on what you have right now or based on the architecture that you're currently working on. You can either choose a launch template or you can choose a launch configuration. And here I'm not going to explain you the differences between the launch template and the launch configuration. I think you guys have already seen the videos that we have for EC2. And if you still have doubts, I have placed two links in the description that you can check that out on what are the differences between launch templates and launch configurations. Because this is something entirely different that we are going to discuss today, like how we are going to automate this process so that we'll keep the details to the minimum so that we can actually do some research and read things before actually trying to do this. So the first prerequisite for you will be to read about this, like how auto scaling works, what is a launch template, what is a launch configuration, and then come back to here so that you can automate this process. So as you can see, we have here like auto scaling group, we have to provide the name and we have to choose the template name. So in order to do that, we have to create a launch template, isn't it? So if you go here and click here, the launch template or create a launch template uh, link, or you can go back to this place and if you go to instances below this you'll see a launch template option and you can just click this as well so if you click this you will have an option of creating a launch template for yourself so launch template will take the launch template name template version you can provide the tags you can provide the source template like which from which template you want to inherit this or if you can provide an existing template that you have from which you want to inherit the properties and here like you can provide the ami name that you want the instance type, the key pair, what type of uh, networking platform that you want, either it could be a EC2 classic or it can be a virtual private cloud. And if it is, then you have to provide the existing uh, security group or you can create a new security group for yourself. And you can attach your storage volumes if you want. You can provide the resource tags, you can provide the interfaces. And uh, in the advanced details, you can see there are a lot of options here, but we are not going to go into details about what and how this actually works. But here at the end, if you come, like uh, when you click on advanced, if here you can come, like you see the user data information, isn't it? So you can paste the user data code here. And if you create launch template with that, every instance that you actually create with this particular launch template will have this user data as a part of your boot script. So whenever you run or whenever you launch, any new instances using that template whenever it boots up it will run that user data code or while booting up and that's the whole idea so what we are going to do is we are going to create launch template and we are going to attach it to this auto scaling group 
and we'll create the instances from the auto scaling group itself and that is going to be really interesting because this is something that we have done manually but we haven't done uh, using automation or python so that is what we'll try to do today so now just go ahead and create your aws ec2 user data underscore auto scaling dot py python file and this is the blank file right now but we have to write some code and the first thing that we'll write is the comment So the first thing that we need to do is we need to import the boto3 module and then i'll just import the error module that we have like uh, boto4 dot exceptions import client error okay okay so from boto core dot exceptions import client error and the next thing that i want to create is i want to just create a class create launch okay i'll just write auto creating group launch template or lt i'll just write that and i'll just name it like this and i'll just define my init by init method where i'll take the argument as my client so the ec2 client that we have so ec2 underscore client just like we did in the previous episode so don't worry about this you can just go back to that also to understand like how we came into the position of writing this so that you get the idea of what exactly we are writing but anyways if you haven't then we can't do much about it so you can just follow this for now so i've just written this and i'll add my code for where i actually want to start the execution from let's start the execution from here and here what i want to do is i just want to add a try catch block where i will be creating the object for my class that i'm going to create and i'll create the go to the client ec2 client i have created the ec2 client so to create the ec2 client just call this module boto3 dot the method name that you want is client and you can pass the argument as the resource that you want to create or the client that you want to create and here we want to create the ec2 client so i have passed the name of the resource type that i want so that is ec2 so there's my variable for the class itself to create the object for that ec2 client and that's it and we'll just close this try catch client error as e and then the main problem with this is if you write a try catch block like this it will obviously be the parent so anything any function that we call inside this try catch will obviously try to fetch the client error but yeah any error that you have this will become the parent for that one so any error that you find in any of the methods will be captured here itself so that's one thing that we need to be worried about but not now we will polish the code later on moving on so don't worry about that so the next thing that we want to do is we want to create the security group so the first thing that we need to do here is we need to create the security group and to create the security group obviously you know that we have to know the vpc id and to grab the vpc id we had written the function already last time so we can just uh, copy paste that once again if you want that we can just copy paste it and we can start off with uh, this once again or else i can just write the code same code again for you that will be good isn't it so let's not waste more time then i'll just write the code for you so that you have a better understanding once again or else if you want you can just copy paste the same code again so my function name is grep vpc subnet id and this is the function that will help me get the vpc and the subnet id so vpc id is equal to blank and the response that i want is self.ec2 client dot describe underscore vpcs so this is the function that helps me to get 
the list of all the VPCs and its metadata or the information. So from that, I can actually capture the details that I want. So for VPC, in response of VPCs, so there's the key that will be inside the response JSON. So that is what I'm iterating right now. So if VPC of tag tags of zero of value contains default then what I'm doing is if this is the default VPC then what I'll do is I'll just capture the VPC ID from it VPC underscore ID is equal to VPC of the VPC ID so this is the key that we have inside the JSON for our VPC ID so once we have got the VPC ID we can just break from the loop and then we can just come out and we can describe the subnets to get the list of subnets from the uh, JSON so here we'll use the function called uh, ec 2 client dot describe subnets so here we have to pass a parameter where we will be filtering the subnets based on the vpc id that we have so currently we are using only one vpc so we'll pass that name itself so that will be the variable that we want to capture so vpc hyphen id is the name of the key and uh, the value is vpc id and the values that we have here is only one because that's the only one vpc that i want the subnet values from so i can just pass a list and i can just pass the vpc id that i have just recently captured so here what it does is it describes the subnet under the vpc id this one so whatever vpc id that we'll get here it will list all the subnets that are present inside the vpc id so once we have this so subnet underscore id is equal to we'll have we have to index the response json that we are getting and uh, there you will find a key called subnets i'm just using the square brackets subnets of the first value that we get because we just want the one value that we want and here you will get the subnet id as the key so inside subnet json you will fetch the first uh, list value inside that first list value you will have a key whose name will be subnet id and that value will be of your subnet id so one more thing that we need for our launch template and auto scaling group especially is the availability zone so that information also we can fetch from this json itself so az or availability zone equal to response of so we can copy the same thing subnets and here this time we'll not use subnet id and there is another key that is available to us that will be availability zone make sure that your spelling for the key is correct because if that is not right you will get the key error and you can verify this by visiting the boto3 website and you will get the response format of the subnet description for this particular method you can just find this method and you will get the response type and there also you can validate what is the key that we want so i have already done that so i'm using it so availability zone should be the key and within that for the first element that i have for the first list that i have within that i have a key called availability zone within which this subnet id exists so i'm just capturing that value so i'll just return these values that i have already collected so vpc id vpc underscore id comma subnet id and az so now one part of our job is done that is grabbing the vpc subnet id and the availability zone name and the next thing that we want to do is we need to create the security group so just like last time that we had created i'll just go back to advanced and if you see this method here you can just copy the same once again and what you can do you can just paste it here so for creating security group we have given the name of the security group that is aws pre security group so we are trying to get the vpc and subnet id values from this method grep vpc subnet id and now there is one more value that gets attached that is az and the second thing is response of client security group so we are just trying to create the security group in that part and here in this part we are trying to pass the parameters that it wants for the inbound rules 
I forgot to copy this part. That's why I was getting that error. So not don't worry about that. And this exception block was written because if you have already created a security group and if you are trying to call this function once again, it'll throw the exception. So I just wanted to print an error message or I wanted to handle that exception by saying that it already exists and the response just I want to grab the values of that particular security group so that I can get the ID and the name. So based on that, I had written the code previous. Now we have to understand this. And the first thing that you need to understand that I already told you, like we will first create the security group. Then we will attach the inbound rule. So this is basically like SSH. So we are giving SSH access to the instance from this security group for all CIDR block that you have like 0.0.0.0, .0 that is all IPv4 addresses. And uh, if it is existing already, and if you are calling this function once again, it will not throw the exception of like already exists. It will bypass that and it will just give you the values of security group ID and the name. And here there is one more thing that we need to do. That is basically because we are going to use a user data and that is going to be a, a web service or Nginx. Yes, we are going to use that and we'll create a Nginx server there or we'll host a Nginx server there. So for that, I want a port 80 to be opened. So for that, we need to just add another IP permission. So that will be, so this will be TCP and the port that we want would be for web service that will be 80, isn't it? So I'll just change the port numbers from 22 to 80. So we will have now two inbound rules. One will be for 22 and the other one will be for 80. So the next thing that we want to create is a launch template. And this is something that we'll be creating newly and freshly here. So please pay full attention to this. So in order to create a launch template, we have to first of all write the function name ec2 underscore launch underscore template template so i can just start off with a print statement that i want so creating creating the launch template started and the template name that i want to give is template underscore name is equal to aws py underscore launch underscore template so we'll add a try catch block here as well but first of all i just want to mention that there are a few things that we need to keep in mind while creating the launch template because the inputs that we are going to pass is the image id the instance type the key name that we'll be using the key pair name and the user data and the security group ids so we already have security group id we already know what is the key name we already know the image id and we also know the instance type because we have already created an instance before. So we already have these information. The only thing that we don't have is the user data. We'll check that out. But once I'll finish this definition, then I'll show you how to add the user data to this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually fetch the security group ID and the security group name. So here I'll just copy this function name and I'll just paste it. And I'll just call it sg underscore id, sg underscore id, comma sg underscore name. The next thing that I want to do is I want to call the response variable and I want to pass the function that we have here, ec2 client dot. The function that helps us to create a launch template is create, create underscore launch underscore template. So this is the function that will help us create the launch template and it will obviously take parameters. So the first parameter is launch template name. Launch template name is equal to template name that we have given. And the next thing is launch template data. So we can actually provide a hell lot of customizations to this and parameters to this to actually customize our requirement, but we want to create it simple here we want to have it very simple here because if we add a lot of properties to our function or that launch template right now we will be getting confused and we'll not be able to understand the concept properly so just stay focused on the basics so that you can go ahead and do something big so now we have to add the launch template data so launch template data is basically our uh, data that you want to have for your instance itself so the first thing that we wanted is the image id the first thing is image id image id 
and I'll just copy the image ID that I have here because I don't want to waste my time and your time as well. And I can basically copy these three things, these four things. And I don't need minimum count and maximum count because that will be handled. So that will be handled by my auto scaling group itself. So I don't need to add that. I'll just make them as the keys and I'll add them as the values. Okay, so we have added them as the values. So we have the image ID, we have the instance ID, we have the key name, and then we have to add the user data. The user data will be. So in order to pass the user data, you have to use the user data key and you have to pass a string. But there is a trick here. You have to pass the base 64 encoded string. How do we do this? So here I'm using this user data dot SS script. And this I have already explained to you before while I have told you like how to uh, create a service with Nginx and how to use it from your user data in EC2. So this is the script that I had used before and this is the one that I'm going to use it now. Here what it does is it installs Nginx and it starts Nginx and enables Nginx and we actually modify the permissions for the HTML file that we have and we add this piece of code or the HTML code inside that index.html that we place inside the HTML file or all the HTML folder. And the benefit of using user data is basically like whenever you launch an instance with the user data, prior to booting up or launching the instance itself or completing the launch, it will run all these steps as a part of its boot script. So whenever you have launched the instance or the instance is running, then you will be ensured that these steps have already been completed until and unless there is some error. So what it gives us is it gives us the flexibility of adding additional data or additional provision or launching a service prior to the instance itself so that we actually save time for configuring these instances by ourselves. So that will be automatically configured for us. So once we have launched an instance with this particular code that we have here and you will be having Nginx installed in that particular EC2 instance and when you ping your public IP or the public DNS, you will be seeing a response like this from your browser. And that is what we'll see. And in order to use this code in your launch template, you need to convert this into base64. So if you just copy this, you can go to a site where actually we can encode base64 and you can just and you can go to this site and you can paste this particular script and you can encode it. And you can copy this code and you can paste it in your text file. So you can create a user data underscore base64.txt file and you can paste your code here or the base64 encoded uh, data here. And once you've done this, what you can do, you can go back to your uh, code. And here what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a small with open statement. So that will be a with open of the file name that I have is user user data base64.txt, isn't it? Comma. I'm going to read it as file pointer and then what I'm going to do I'm going to pass it onto a variable user data underscore b64 underscore str equal to fp dot read that's it just copy this variable and come down and paste it that's it that is what we need and this is the place where actually a lot of people face problems so just make sure that you have your proper string as a part of your base64 encoded format and you will be good to go and the next thing that we have here is security group id that we need to pass security underscore sorry security group id and the value is ids sorry ids and it is a list so we will pass the security group id here and we only have one security group so we'll pass only one value as a part of the list that's understandable, isn't it? So in order to make use of this particular launch template, we need a launch template ID that can be associated with the auto scaling group. So that is what we're going to get from the response of this particular launch template. So once we execute this particular code, this particular code, the response will give a JSON value from within which we can actually iterate that JSON and we can get the launch template ID. I'll show you actually how it actually works and I'll show you by printing this response JSON so that you can understand it better. I'll, before that, I'll just write the code of how to fetch the template ID and we'll 
finish this execution and I'll just print every detail that we need and then we'll go over one by one and we'll see what has actually happened. So the next thing is we'll fetch the template ID template underscore ID is equal to response response of launch launch template that is the key of the JSON and the another key that we have here is inside which we'll find a launch template ID which will give us the value of the launch template ID and then I can just print uh, creation or creating creating the uh, launch template completed completed template id is equal to this comma template sorry template name is this dot format of template id comma template name that's it and then what i can do i can just return template id comma template and here as well, if you have created launch template with that name, you cannot create it once again. It will fail for you. So just to handle that part, what I can do is I can just add exception block here. And then what I can do is I can just describe the particular template name so that I get the value of the particular ID. So what I can do is here, I can just create a response variable inside which I can just pass ec2, ec2.client and I can just describe the launch templates launch templates and it will take the parameter of launch template name that has become very uh, easy for us because we have passed the launch template name so we know what exactly the name will be and that is why we can pass the same and uh, this template name will be taken as a parameter for this function and it will give us the details for this particular launch template and as it has already been created in the response i will get the template id value and the template name as well so that i don't have to worry about whether it fails or passes it will just give me the name or the id of the launch templates and here what happens is i can just uh, derive the launch template id that i have i can just print it here from here but the only difference will be it takes it has a different JSON type. So it is templates here. So here it is template. It is templates here of it will be a list because we are passing a list here, list of values. So it will try to it will try and give me the list of all the launch template names that I've given. It'll try to describe each one of them. So it'll pass a list here. The launch templates of zero. So this is the one value that I'm going to get, and inside which I'll have that launch template ID. So I got the launch template ID and I can just return the same template id comma template name the last thing for us is to create the auto scaling group so let's start with that auto scaling group and inside which i can just type a print statement So this is done and the next thing that we want is launch template ID and launch template. So I'll just take this and just paste it here and I'll just add a variable name to this and I'll just call the function that I have self dot self dot create launch template. So from here I'll get the details of the launch template that I have. So the next thing that I want is we want the availability zone name uh, and the VPC ID and the subnet ID. So we can just fetch the same information from the security group that we had called uh, grep VPC subnet ID and this line I can just copy paste it here once again. So now we have the launch template name, launch template ID, VPC ID, subnet ID, AZ and that's all that we need. But there is a very big difference that I'll tell you right now. So to create the auto scaling group, we need to create the client, isn't it? Obviously that we have already created, but there is a huge difference here because the auto scaling group is being created with a resource that is not EC2. It is with 
uh, group name or the resource name that is called auto scaling. So whenever you create a client for auto scaling, you should remember that you have to use a new client type. So this is a new client type that we'll be using that is called auto scaling. It's not EC2, it will be auto scaling. Remember that. So when you're creating auto scaling group, the client name will be auto scaling, not EC2. And the next thing is similar to what we have already done before. So response is equal to client dot create underscore auto scaling group. And this will also obviously take parameters. So the first thing that it will take is auto scaling group name. So I'll give it a name like AWS PY underscore auto scaling group. Yeah, this seems to be an appropriate name. And the next thing is launch template. Launch template. And uh, and what are we going to give? We have to give the launch template ID. So here I'll just pass the parameter launch template ID. And what is the launch template ID here? This one. I'll just copy this and I'll paste it here. And the next thing that we have to give is the minimum size that we want for the auto scaling group to scale. So minimum size will be one. The max max size will be three. So that's the maximum that I want to scale. And the desired capacity capacity will be two. So there will be a minimum of one. It will not go below that. There will be a maximum of three that will not go above that. And there will be a desired capacity of two so desired capacity in the sense it will always try to maintain two and if there is a spike or anything it will try to scale it up to three but it will not go above this or it will not downscale below one so that's the basic configuration when you think of auto scaling so the next thing that we have is all the availability zone the availability zones so we are hosting it only one availability zone and the subnet so we can just pass the az there was a comma missing here so sorry for that so this is the response client dot create auto scaling group. The client is basically your boto three dot client of uh, auto scaling, and within which we have the first parameter that is auto scaling group name. We have given this name. This is the launch template, which takes the launch template ID as a parameter. We have already grepped the value from the launch template ID. The minimum size is one. The maximum size is three. The desired capacity is two. The availability zones is AZ that we have already grepped from our function grep vpc subnet id so once we have done this that's it we can just uh, write a if condition if str of response of response metadata i'm just trying to uh, give some meaningful messages while we are executing this code so i'll just try to do some over action here by providing some meaningful messages that we have so http status code that's code and if that particular value is 200 then if the status code is 200 then we know that it has successfully executed so i'll just copy the same thing from here and i'll just paste it so creation of auto scaling group using launch template is completed and if it is not then we can write our else condition and i can just copy and paste it here and i can just mark it as failed so now as you can see it is very simple for us to write a python code and if you don't have any programming experience also you can just follow these things so that you can if you're facing any interviews and if you want to tell them how it actually works then you can just explain the code that you have written and this is very pretty simple i'm just trying to keep it very simple because i understand and i know that not everyone here might be having programming experience and you might be uh, like budding python enthusiast so you can actually learn this so that's the right word i think and here i'm going to call the object sorry call object dot create auto scaling group 
that's it so if i execute this code it will be calling this function so it will start from here and then it will basically create the launch template and then it will try to create the auto scaling group for us so i think we are good to go for now we can just execute this code and if there are any errors then we'll try to solve them and we'll see if there are any errors then how those errors will be and how we can actually resolve them so here we have under source file we just need to type python and we need to just type aws ec2 user data autoscaling.py and if everything works fine it will just create the auto scaling group for us create the launch template create the security group as per our requirement and it will launch two instances as that is our desired capacity so we're good with this just hit enter so what is that has happened here so creating the launch template started uh, invalid launch template name so that is a problem here so i had given your filters right filter uh, you, it should be filters okay that was a good thing so we learned something new so just you don't have to just please make sure that you don't mess up with the keywords start the creation of the auto scaling group launch template creating the launch template started creating security group creating the launch template completed there's the template id there's the template name and creation of auto scaling group template completed so if this is completed now what happens is if we go back so the first thing that i want to see is i want to see the launch template you click on this one you will be seeing aws launch template aws py launch template if i click on this i'll be able to see that it should be having t2.micro there's the ami id that we have passed there's the ec2.key ec2-key that we have for the key pair name and there's the security group the next thing that i want to see is basically a security group not the order scaling group right now so the second thing that i want to see is the security group you can go back here and what i can do i can just search for this uh, i'll just refresh this once again and here i will have the name aws py security group just click on this it should have two inbound rules see so this is the type http 80 and the source is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 and this is ssh that is 22 just like what we intended to create and now that i've seen the launch template and the security group i'll just go to auto scaling groups and there should be my auto scaling group already created see so if you click on this so the desired capacity is two minimum is one maximum is three this is the auto scaling group name and this is the template id that is using awspy launch template if we go back and see lt 04f 40169 04F40169. So here what we have done, we have created an auto scaling group using the AWS launch template that we created by using Python, and we have created our two instances. And if you want to see, if you want to see that, you can go back to the activity section here and you will be seeing there will be two instances that will be launched here. Successful, successful. These are the two EC2 instances that are launched. And I know, I know you want to see the instance itself, but yeah, let's go there. So go to the EC2 dashboard and then go to the running instances. You will see two instances running and these are the two instances. And if you click on any of them, you will be seeing a public IPv4 DNS. And before that, just wait for a moment before that. We have to confirm that this is the same instance that is using the security group that we have created and it is using the same user data script. So if you go to security, it will be using AWS PY security group and it will have two inbound rules. So it will be 80 and 22. That's it. And the next thing that I wanted to see was EC2 hyphen key. So there's the keypad name. And the next thing that I wanted to see was the user data. So right click on any of the instances that you have, go to the instance setting and here you will see edit user data. Just click on this. So this is the user data that I had written. And this was basically inserted in a base64 encoded format. 
So having said that, if you want to validate whether we have successfully installed Nginx or not, and we have hosted the application or hosted the so-called minima application or not, we can just copy this particular ID or the DNS name, and you can just click on open address. And actually we have hosted it using AT. I'll just delete HTTPS and I'll just hit enter. See. So the response is from IP 172.31.39.138. AP South 1, Compute Internal, have a great day. So this is the host name for us. So if you want to validate this, you can just copy this once once again. So 172, 31, 130, 10, 138. I'll just paste it here. See. And this goes same for this as well. You can just copy this and paste it here. Okay. So this is basically our Nginx installed on the EC2 instance using an auto scaling group with a desired capacity of 2 and created using the automation with Python. And that's something that is really interesting, isn't it? So let's suppose I want to terminate all the resources that we have created. So I'll just go back to this. And the one thing that I have to do is I can just go to auto scaling group. And I can just select this and I can delete this. Don't do this in your production environment. I'm just showing you as a demo. So just delete this by typing delete and just keep on refreshing. And once you have deleted this, what exactly happens is if you go back to your instances, they will also be terminated. So now, as you can see, they are in the shutting down state. So now once you have already deleted the auto scaling group, you can just go to the launch templates and you can select the launch template, go to action, delete template, type delete or copy here and paste it here and press delete. That's it. We have cleaned up the launch template. We have deleted the auto scaling group. Maybe go to activity, terminating EC2 instance, terminating EC2 instance. So these are the two status that it has. So as you can see here, what it is mentioning as a part of the log here is that a user request post deleted auto scaling group, changing the desired capacity from two to zero. So what it is trying to tell you is if a user has actually requested for the auto scaling group to deleted, then what it will do is it will change the desired capacity from two to zero so that so that it will delete all the instances or it will terminate all the instances that have been provisioned using this auto scaling group. Now, if you go back, I think it is terminated. So yeah, it is good. Nothing in place for us. We are good to go. And the last thing is you can delete the security group as well. So you can go to security groups and before deleting the instances that are attached to a particular security group, you cannot delete the security group. So make sure that your instances are terminated, then only you can actually terminate your or delete your security group. So once these instances have been terminated, just come back to the security group list, find your security group that you have created, just select the one that you want or you have, and then just click on actions, go to the drop down, go to the bottom, then select delete security group. Yes, just click on delete. That's it. We have cleaned up everything that we have created now. And that is what I want you to do as a part of your practice and experimentation. I want you to delete each of the resources that we have created in the order of the way that we have deleted it here manually. So I hope this was interesting for you. I, I really enjoy automating stuff because you can see the progress when you actually write code and it actually happens in real time. That's a very good boost for any developer that you can say. So that was a really interesting session and we learned a lot today on how to create auto scaling groups with launch templates and hosting our code using AC2 user data. And if you have any feedbacks or suggestions, then please let me know on the comment section below and please do share what you liked, what you didn't. And if you're new to this channel, then please do subscribe because this channel is going to give you everything that you need to know about the cloud. So please make sure that you subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And I would also request you to please hit the bell notification icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video that actually keeps you handy. 
and it's very easy just click on the bell icon next to the subscribe button and select allow all notifications and you're good to go so i'll meet you in the next session on aws until then it's pytholic signing off